Hello, beautiful people! Welcome to the next episode in my YouTube channel where I share with you tips, suggestions and the dose of motivation for making your application for the Erasmus Mundus Scholarship great! So, stay here with me and today I will share with you five effective tips for writing your motivational statement. So, since the motivational letter is probably one of the most important elements that the Consortium Universities Committee will evaluate when analyzing your application, I will share with you the tips that helped me to get the Erasmus Mundus scholarship. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. How to write your motiva motivational letter so that it stands out? Remember that the committee is reading probably five or six hundred of the motivational letters coming from all of the applicants. So how to make yours, how to make this letter stand out? I think number one, divide your letter into different paragraphs, into different parts. And now, what do I mean by it? Probably it is a very different or maybe quite uh, useful to start your motivational letter with the sentence that in a very strong way reflects on what you're doing here, what do you believe in, why do you want to be in this course. And this is what I've done. My motivational letter started with one very strong sentence that kind of reflected my uh, thoughts, my feelings towards the situation in the world, situation um, that I want to improve thanks to this program. So that was my first line of my letter. Then when that's done, go to the introduction part, meaning write down a certain event from your life or something that happened, the turning point that directed your steps, your path into this direction. What actually happened in your life that you decided to study this master program? The next one is the relevant working and volunteering experience. So whatever is not included in your CV, write it down in the motivational letter. But write it in a way that it actually um, reflects on the relevant experience towards what you're going to study. For example, in my case, in the case of the degree social work with youth and children, obviously all of the volunteering experience that I included was related to the work with youth and children. However, when you actually read the uh, goals and objective of the course, you will realize that they touch upon certain aspects. So if it's about digital technologies, if it's about sustainability, if it's about, um, I don't know, politics, then try to find experiences in your life that were actually related to these aspects. The next one, write about your plans for the master thesis. I know, I know it might be super early to think about it, but this is actually something that matters write what you want to research, write what you want to investigate. This is very important for the committee that will evaluate your motivational letter because based on that they will decide if your research project, if your interest is actually worth giving you the scholarship. So try to think about it, try to think about it well and of course it doesn't even have to be something that you will actually do, but something that reflects your interest, the way that you... And the last one, in the terms of the structure, is the most important one. <laughs> and now imagine that you are standing in front of the people who will decide if the scholarship will go into your hands. How do you convince them? What reasoning do you give them that will convince them that this is you who deserves the scholarship? Imagine that this is your elevator pitch. This is your only one chance to convince this group of people. So make it stand out. Refer to some personal experience, refer to your previous life situations, refer to anything might be worth mentioning. Keep it short, keep it on point and 
keep in mind that this is your only one chance so really pay a lot of attention to how this is going to sound point number two add the dates into your working and volunteering experience so imagine that i say during my summer experience uh, during my summer time i've been volunteering in the sos village and now compare it with from May to October 2019, I volunteered uh, in the SOS village. It has a completely different sound. And do it with all of the working and volunteering experiences. Put the concrete and uh, specific dates uh, and months of, your, of the time that you spend in this organization. This is really making your motivational letter sounds more, sound more professional, so do not forget the dates, uh, the months, the days are not necessarily that important, but try to make it um, as visual for the reader as possible, so they can actually visualize how long you've been vol volunteering, uh, what were you doing, and how much of this experience you actually have. Number three read goals and objectives of the program and refer to them in your motivational letter. So what I've done is I went to, to the website, I read very carefully the goals and objectives of the program. Then I realized that there are certain keywords that are being repeated, meaning uh, human rights, digital tools, empowerment, work with youth, and now focus on them and try to put these keywords into your motivational letter. So whatever you want to do in the future so that it relates to this aspect. It really helps because it really makes your application um, in line with the objectives of the course. Uh, number four, be unique. And I know it's easy to say, but imagine the consortium university, uh, sorry, the consortium university's committee is reading 478 of these applications and all of them probably or like most of them probably will look the same sound the same they will be referring to the same things and your goal is to make your application unique so write about the experiences that were really unique in your life try like think about it be yourself they really want to see who who you are what you've been through and what these experiences actually gave you. So again, think about it, be creative, be innovative and put it all on paper. And number five, the last one, and that might be so obvious, but I really need to mention it. Please do proofread your motivational letter 20 times, 20 times. Give it to someone who's English level is high, so they can read it, so they can correct it. Give it to different people. Give it to them to tell you what is their impression of your letter, if it's actually interesting, if it's not too boring, if it's not too long. Proofread the whole thing. Try to, like, not try to use the proper editing the same font, the same size, do not make it too colorful, do not make it too messy, make it look professional, make it look neat and clear and that is very very important and I cannot stress enough. And for more content, tips and suggestions for the Erasmus Mundus scholarship application and the program, um, do subscribe to this channel, comment, like, and I will see you here next time. Bye!